Okay, so uh, we spent the last couple of days, or last couple of lessons, uh, going over the um, uh, properties of exponents and properties of rational exponents. And now we're getting to the final sort of, I don't know, ultimate sort of application of this. And that's, of course, on all of our algebraic simplifications. Okay, so we're going to be applying these fraction exponents, negative exponents, and so on <coughs> to simplifying algebraic expressions. Now, we've already done some of this. So some of this is going to be review, and some of this maybe is another opportunity for you to understand uh, factoring and or canceling uh, ideas uh, when we do some division. But either way, um, this is the culmination of our exponent laws uh, in the form of simplifying algebraic expressions. So uh, first, a couple of key notes as we go along. I've talked to you guys already about the big three, okay? And that's really the predominant sort of um, uh, operation or, or, or approach or strategy that I'm going to suggest for all this. Um, but the strategies that one student implements uh, may not be the same, okay, as others, all right? And that's key to, to keep in mind, okay, that not everybody does these things exactly the same way, okay? Um, bed mass, of course, should be considered at all times. That's something that I've seen in past tests. Uh, it's been overlooked, uh, despite the fact that it's been emphasized in class or in the, in the lessons. Um, that, that people are still overlooking bed mass. So we do have to follow. Uh, I guess the key feature would be uh, exponents, okay, and brackets are the ones that tend to be overlooked. And people do division and multiplication, or they even do ad addition before they do multiplication. That happened in a rational expressions unit. So keep that idea in mind as we go along. But a suggestion remains and will always remain to use the big three. Okay, that is the multiplication rule, where you have bases with like exponents, or sorry, have like bases, uh, and they're multiplied, you end up adding the exponents. The division rule, where you have like bases, and you end up uh, subtracting the exponents. Okay? And then finally, where you have a, a power, um, a base to an exponent, and then it's raised to another power. Now, they don't have to be like bases, because in this case, it's got an extra power or an extra exponent associated with that power that's already written. But either way, that's when you multiply the exponents. Those are the big three. And as a result of that, that tends to be what governs most, if not all, of our simplification strategies. Another thing to keep in mind is that when we have a numerator versus a denominator, they tend to be sort of bracketed. So in your bed mass, that would be the first thing you would do, the numerator separate, separate from the denominator, at least until you get one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. Okay? And right, one continues up until we get a single base, the single positive exponent on every variable and coefficients completely evaluated. That's what, that's what tells you that you're done. Okay? So let's, let's have a look at these. All right. So let's start this, this one. It's sort of a simple one to start with. It, of course, involves uh, the variable x. Okay? Uh, so now we are simplifying an algebraic expression. Uh, I know that you want to take the negative 5 and add it to the positive 5, but remember, bed mass suggests, again, bed mass suggests that exponents would be first. Okay, and of the big three, I know you want to do the big three, we're going to simplify the numerator always separate from the denominator because these are, in essence, bracketed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue, leave this first term or component alone of the first term, and then go x to the 5 to the negative 2, and that's x to the negative 10. Okay, in the denominator, we have x to the power of 4 to the negative 2. That's all we can do, but again, that's the exponent, so we're going to go x to the negative 8. And if you want to put that there as well, that's fine. Now, I know you're going to have to pause this video and probably zoom in a little bit because we're doing exponents work. And this is, as, this is as good as it gets as far as zooming in. Okay, sorry about that, but that's how life works uh, when it comes to this day and age and how we, can, how we can videotape things. I've been requested to do these ones rather than others, so I will try to make these as large as possible. Okay, now, still simplifying the numerator like bases. We add, they're multiplying. Uh, so we add the exponents, we get x to the negative 15, all over x to the negative 8. And then we subtract the exponents, okay? Now be careful, negative 15 minus minus 8, okay? Or negative 15 plus 8, which is negative 7. Final answer, we cannot have a negative exponent, so we write this as 1 over x to the 7. Again, the negative 7 suggests that if it's in the numerator, it should be the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it should be in the numerator. Okay, or you can write it as 1 over, okay? Uh, and finally, completely simplified. So even that 1 has to be expanded out in simplified form. 
okay? So if you were to write that as uh, one over x to the seven, okay, and then, then you would still need to go one to the power of seven, which is one, and then x to the power of seven, as it were, okay? A negative exponent is not incorrect, but it's bad form, okay? And we wanna make sure that we're, we're approaching the, the most simplified version in the variable uh, in its positive extent rather than negative extent so we can see whether it's an inverse or reciprocal relationship, okay? So, next uh, example, all right, hopefully that's okay with you uh, as a final answer that's acceptable, okay? Next, uh, what we're gonna do again is uh, follow bed mass, okay? Now we've got one term on the top, one term on the bottom, but we're still gonna simplify the numerator separate from the denominator, okay? So first we're gonna go 25 to the one half, okay? Hopefully we know what one half is or we remember what one half is. X to the eight times one half, it's gonna be X to the eight times one half, which is four. Y to the six to the one half is gonna be six times one half, which is six over two or three. And Z to the four, Z to the four times one over two is four over two, which is squared. Denominator, 27 to the one third. X to the three times one third is to the power of one. Y to the six times one third is six thirds. Uh, that's gonna be two. And Z to the nine times one third, nine thirds is Z cubed. Now we try and evaluate these numbers. If we can't evaluate them, it's always best to write them as a root. This root is gonna be a square root. This root is gonna be a cube root, so it's a little different. Uh, it's easier to evaluate and write them in root format. But hopefully you can maybe think of those numbers uh, and, and do that in your head. But if not, that's, that's okay. You can use that operation in your calculator. The, X, the X's and the Y's and the Z's, I'm just gonna rewrite those and simplify uh, the numerical coefficients in a bit. But, but I don't wanna do too much in each step, okay? Now what do we do? Well, again, we've got, we can't divide these two because that's an exponent one half and exponent one third. And this is a base 25 and a base 27. So we see if we can evaluate that. That's gonna be five, the square root of five is five. The cube root of 27 is three times three times three, or three. Now, x to the four and then x to the one. Four minus one. The result of that I always put in the numerator. Even if it's a negative exponent, I will eventually bring it back down again to, the po to where it's supposed to be and be a positive exponent. Y to the three divided by y to the two is gonna be y or y to the one. I'll leave a one in there for now. Just just we can simplify or we can take out the one later on. This is just for bookkeeping purposes. And then we've got z squared, z cubed, z to the negative one, okay? Now for someone who's used to canceling, they'll just leave the extra z down there. And that's fine if you wanna do that. That's perfectly fine if you wanna do that. In the end, that z is still gonna be in the numerator, but it sort of depends on the approach that you've been taking. Now, right now I've got five. X to the three is fine where it is, so I go x to the three. Y to the one is fine where that is, so I just put a y there. And then I go over 3z, not 3z to anything because this is the minus 1, so 3z to the 1. I'm not going to include that 1, of course, because I'm writing my final answer, and we don't include the exponent 1, and we don't have negative exponents. Remember, z to the minus 1 says, hey, it's in the numerator. It's a negative exponent. We should write it in the denominator, and so we do. Okay, we're not going across fractions. This is all within one fraction with one term in the top, one term in the bottom. Okay, and there's our final answer there. Okay, nothing too crazy but we are getting increasingly difficult with these operations. And as you can see, when we get to the back, okay, it starts to get really crazy, all right? And we will take care of that, okay? Again, using the big three and worrying about our fraction exponents and our negative exponents right at the very end if we can manage, okay? Now, you're gonna see, of course, remember, I'm gonna write up bed mass again here. You probably should write it every now and then just to remind yourself. So here, it's all in the numerator. There's nothing in the denominator. So at least we got something straightforward happening here. The bases are different. So we can't just add these exponents. This is a to the minus one. This is a to the minus one. This is b cubed. But this is b to the minus one a squared. And this is b squared and not b cubed. So they're not like bases, even though you're looking for some sort of shortcut there. Okay, so what do we do? We apply the exponent here. Okay, so this one half affects everything inside the bracket. So a negative one times one half is negative one half. B, three times one half is three halves. And that's that exponent work done, okay? Then the next one. A squared 
to the two thirds. So two times two thirds, that's a to the four thirds. B to the negative one times two thirds is negative two thirds. Okay? Then we've got a to the negative, and that, that, that one's taken care of. That exponent is taken care of, or um, power raised to an exponent is taken care of, where we multiply them. Uh, here again, we've got another exponent, uh, negative 1 times 3 fifths, so a is negative 3 fifths. And b squared times 3 fifths is going to be b, 2 times 3 is 6 over 5. Okay? Now we're going to kind of sort of break these up into separate little things, and we are going to have to do some common denominators. It was inevitable. Okay, so you're going to have to get used to that. Okay, so what we're going to do on the A as we're multiplying all the way through is that A, A, and A can be written as the same exponent. Negative one-half, okay, plus four-thirds minus or plus negative three-fifths. And then B, another fraction question, okay, where you're going to go three-halves, Um, plus negative two-thirds plus six-fifths, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these on a scrap piece of paper, and I'm going to do these little fraction questions on another scrap piece of paper, only because um, I want to make, make the work big enough so you can actually see what we're doing, okay? And it wouldn't hurt for you to do this off on another scrap piece of paper as well. So I'm going to take this first fraction here uh, from, from there, okay? And I'm going to add negative one-half, plus four-thirds minus three-fifths, just so we don't write them in exponent form. It's a little bit difficult to see that, okay? And this is, again, the power of A. So here my common denominator is going to be 30, so I'm going to multiply that by 6, and that by 6, that by 10, that by 10, and that by 15, and that by 15, okay? So I get negative 15 over 30 plus 40 over 30 minus 18 over 30. 30. We got a negative and a negative. That's negative uh, 20, 33. So that's going to be a really, really ugly uh, positive 7 over 30. Okay? Um, it is what it is. Okay? I just made it up off the top of my head, so I don't even know what the answer is going to work out to be. Okay? But for B, or sorry, for A, the exponent on A is going to be 7 over 30. Now, we can't evaluate that anyway because we don't know what A is. Okay, but we can write it as a root, I suppose. Uh, if it's the same type of root, we can write b as well that way. I'll show you some alternative ways in which you can write that. Now we're going to do the fraction part for this one. We've got 3 halves minus 2 thirds plus 6 fifths. And this is a pretty crazy question, but it can get this crazy. Okay, so again, that's this one right here. Okay, again, same common denominator. Okay, I'm going to multiply this by 15, 15, 10, 10. Six, six, okay. That's going to be uh, 45 over 30 minus 20 over 30 plus 36 over 30. That's going to be 25 plus 36 is 50, 61 over 30. I think that's right. 45 is 25, 55, 61. 61 out of 30. And no, another ugly one, right? So my exponent on B is going to be 61 over 30. And I know maybe some of the ones in the textbook may work out a little nicer for you, okay? But that is what it is. And again, scrap papers are very useful for this sort of thing, especially when you're writing little numbers and exponents, okay? They're both of the root 30. So in essence, what I could do is I could go like that, the 30th root of A to the 7, and go 30th root of B to the 61, and because they're both the same type of root, which it won't always work out like this. In fact, maybe it's lucky that it works out like this. It's going to be the a to the 7, b to the 61, okay? As a final answer, that's probably the nicest way it looks, but the fact that you got down to this makes me quite happy. We were, really would like to write fractional exponents as types of roots for a final answer if we can. Okay? And even if we had to write it in this form, it's a little bit better. Again, fairly ugly question. We're doing our best here. We're doing our best here. 
okay? Now for this one, we've actually got a root written here. And I don't think it's good to do exponent law questions with a root. So once we get to the denominator, we're going to focus a little bit on that. In fact, what I'm going to do to start with, and I may run out of room here, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more economical with my writing here, is I'm just going to rewrite that. And then I'm going to write this as, see what's a cube root? I'm going to take that negative 27, x to the 9, y to the negative 6, and I'm going to write that to the 1 -third. Okay, that's what you're going to want to do for a cubed root. All right? Don't look at maybe simplifying any of those. Just leave them underneath or in the bracket, like being underneath the hood of the square root or the radical sign. Okay? And that's probably your best bet. Now what we can do is, again, focus on our bed mass. We'll, we'll simplify the numerator. So what we're going to do is we're going to do these ex this exponent first and then this exponent as well. So it's going to be negative 2 to the power of 2. I'm not going to write negative 2 to the power of 2. I'm just going to go negative 2 squared. So negative squared is positive. 2 squared is 4. Okay? x squared squared is x to the 4. We're multiplying 2 times 2. And then y to the negative 3 squared, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 3 cubed is 27. Okay? Uh, x to the cubed, or x to the 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9. Y to the negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 again, or as well. Now, this again is depending on your comfort level, but negative 27 to the power of 1 third. Remember, 1 third is a cube root. So the cube root of negative 27, I'm just skipping a step here, maybe I shouldn't, but the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. If not, you could certainly write it as 27, negative 27 to the 1 third, and then evaluate that later if you want to. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. x to the 9 to the power of 1 third is 9, over, 9 times 1 third, or 9 over 3, which is x cubed. And y to the negative 6 to the 1 third is negative 6 times 1 third, or y to the negative 2. Then again, we simplify the numerator. So 4 times 27 is going to be 80, 108 x to the 4 and x to the 9 is going to be x to the 13. y to the negative 6 times y to the negative 6 is going to be negative 12. Again, adding the exponents, doing my big 3, simplifying the numerator and denominator separately. Now, this one we don't have any work to do with. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to, well, I think I'm okay still to put that there. 109, uh, 108 divided by 3. I bet you that's going to come out. 108 divided by 3. Is going to be 36, I believe. 36. Yes, three to, yes, 36. Okay, a negative 36. So 108 divided by 3 is negative 36. x to the power of 13 divided by x to the power of 3. We subtract those exponents and we get x to the 10. y to the negative 12 and y to the negative 2. Remember, it's negative 12 minus minus 2. So that ends up being y to the negative 10. Okay? Again, I, if I'm doing the subtraction rule, I bring the result up to the numerator and then I correct afterwards. Negative 36. X to the 10, positive exponent. Very happy where that is. Y to the negative 10 can be Y to the 10 in the denominator. And there's my final answer for that crazy looking one. Okay? Then we got this nuts looking one. Okay? And it's actually pretty crazy. Again, I've got a bunch of roots plus a power of negative 2. What I could do is simplify what's happening in there and then worry about the roots as well, okay? Even off on another piece of paper if you wanted to, but I would show your work somewhere. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to put this square bracket in here. I'm going to write this. It's a square root. Remember, if they leave the value out, it's a square root. So that's going to be, so that's negative 2. That's going to be 1 half. That's my first square root. So that's that taken care of. Then I've got a cubed root which is one third. Then I've got another square root. See, it's a square root there, so I've got to take care of that with a one cube root and then a power of one half. And then I've got, writing unfortunately a little bit smaller, 16a to the minus 10, b to the 6. Nothing going on there, no exponents outside there, but this one doesn't have an exponent outside it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go negative 4, see how there's an exponent here, okay? 
So I'm just rewriting these roots, and I'm going to square the negative 4 and get 16. Square the a to the minus 1, multiplying those exponents, a to the minus 2, and then b to the 6. b to the 3 times 2 is b to the 6. Okay? Then, if it depends how you want to do this. Um, I still got this big bracket here that I still have some simplification to do. To do. Okay, so what I am going to do is I am going to go, okay, well, well, inside this bracket here, um, that's going to be, this is the, the immediate inside. So this is, this, is, this is this multiplied by this. 16 times 16 is 256. A to the minus 10 times A to the minus 2, we add those exponents and we get negative 12. And we add these exponents and we get B to the 12. Okay? And this is a, then to the 1 half, to the 1 third, to the 1 half, to the negative 2. Okay? Now, if you're feeling it, okay, rather than including all these crazy brackets, because you're probably getting pretty sick of these brackets, what you could do is this is a base to a power to a power, sorry, a, a power to an exponent to exponent to exponent to exponent. So I'm going to be multiplying this times what's in here, and then with that result times what's in here, and then that result times what's in here. So why don't I just multiply all these guys straight across? A half times a third times a half times negative two. That gives me negative two. I'm not going to reduce it yet. And then 1 times 1 times 1 times negative 2, because that's negative 2 over 1, over 2 times 3 times 2, which is 8. Which leaves me with 256, a to the negative 12, b to the 12, all to the negative 1 fourth. Okay? Then I go, okay, I'm going to go 256 to the negative 1 fourth, a, then I go negative 12 times negative 1 fourth is going to be a positive 12 over 4. And then B to the 12 times negative 1 fourth is 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. And then over 4. Okay? Need some more room over here. Okay, 256 to the negative 1 fourth, that's going to be on the bottom. That's going to be 256 to the 1 fourth. Okay? a to the 12 over 4 is just a cubed. b to the negative 12 over 4 is going to be b to the negative 3. Then I'm going to have a cubed in the numerator. This is going to be the fourth root of 256. And then this is going to be b cubed, outside of the root. Then I'm going to have a cubed, and I don't know what the fourth root of 256 is. What times what times what times what? Four times. Oh, I mean, and you can put it in your calculator. You can go ahead and use, use the button I've shown you how to use in your calculator uh, yesterday, uh, in yesterday's lesson. Uh, it's going to vary from person to person, but it generally kind of looks like this, and it'll have like an X and a Y. Uh, it could be, it's probably in a second function. It could have Y to the X. Uh, it could be like... Uh, a to the B, or vice versa, I can't remember. Okay, it sort of depends on the type of calculator you have. If you're, if you're worried about it, you know, when I do see you guys in class, you can let me know, but it's going to be a 4. Okay, and then B cubed. And there's my final answer from that craziness, which is, which is pretty nuts. Okay, now there's a lot of work for you to work on here. Okay, but I only want you to do A, B, C, and D, and there's a lot of examples for you to do. And I know that's a lot of work to do. Okay, but the more of these you do, the more that you practice, the better you'll get. It starts simple and it goes to complex. So do your best with that.